Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. I'm your host, Chris Arnold. Today, I got Zach Booth. If you're a part of the tribe, you know that name. Zach's definitely a player and has been in the game for a while. And guess what? You're going to hear probably one of the craziest stories about radio so far on like Zach's journey. And again, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of like the climax of what you're going to hear today. He's uh, closed his first deal and put $38,000 in his pocket off his first radio deal. But you got to hear how in the world he got here from where he started. So Zach, my man, what's up? Glad to have you on the show, buddy. How are you? Doing great, Chris. Thanks for having me. And it's uh, fun to be back on the, uh, the Wholesaling Inc. podcast again. Th thanks for having me. I love it. Now, if someone's tuned in for the first time, maybe they don't know Zach. Give us a little bit about your background snapshot. Like, what market are you in? Uh, what kind of uh, deals are you doing in the sense of strategy? So, what you got going on? Yeah. So, you know, my name's Zach Booth. Uh, you can follow me on social media and stuff if you want to. But I was a window cleaner for nearly a decade. Um, and I was struggling. I had spent tens of thousands of dollars on coaching. And I, I wasn't doing any real estate deals and it sucked. Like I was living paycheck to paycheck. I had some debt um, and it was painful. And uh, I met Cody Hoffine here in Utah because he's in my market. So I'm here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And it opened up my eyes to the potential um, and what I, what I could do, what I could do for my family. And um, wholesaling Inc. gave me an opportunity to learn how to find discounted properties. I had some struggles along the way, but ultimately I found success and, you know, was able to pay off my debts and, and create financial freedom. And I was, I'm able to help other people as well now. And, uh, so it's been an amazing journey and it was super awesome to be able to meet Chris. He's added so much value to my business as well. So, so all the Wholesaling Inc., Chris, I mean, I'm a huge fan of everything that you guys do. I really am. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Awesome. And we love having you, man, and hanging out with you for sure. I love how your brain works because uh, you look at things a little bit differently. So I'm always kind of picking up how Zach kind of approaches something, which I think is cool. So you're a little bit more contrarian, which I value because you kind of do things your own way, which is super cool. So again, people always like to know before radio, because again, everyone's like, let's talk about lead generation, right? How you uh, really creating opportunities uh, to find wholesale deals and flip deals. What were you using before radio that was really working to create uh, discounted uh, opportunities for deals? Yeah, so I, I, I'm still using and I was using driving for dollars. I love it. I teach it. Um, I feel like there's no other better way to get started when you're just starting out in this business. But um, with, with like any other lead generation source, there's a certain point where you tap out your entire market. I mean, you own your market with that marketing strategy. And I found myself in that position with driving for dollars and I wanted more. So I had learned, um, early on, and this was, I feel like one of the big reasons that catapulted me to success is I learned that real estate investing is marketing. It's not wholesaling. It's not flipping houses. It's not buy and hold investing. If you are not consistently finding discounted properties, you're not going to be in business for long. Yeah. Right? You can know everything in the world about investing and not have any discounted deals. You'll go out of business within a few weeks. As soon as you're, as soon as you're it's out the of money. first domino. With that it domino is. doesn't fall. It doesn't matter about any domino you have stacked behind it. So exactly. I completely agree with you. So before we hop into the crazy story of how you and I met and the crazy story of how you got launched on radio, Tell me what, from a characteristic standpoint, attracted you to the marketing channel of radio? What made you go, you know what? I think this might be a great fit for my lead generation strategy. What was it characteristically? Well, I got introduced to you through someone else that I trusted. And I thought, hey, if it's, if it's making Chris money, why can't it make me money? Honestly, that was the number one reason. I don't care... <laughs> I don't care if it's driving for dollars, if it's radio, TV ads, if someone can show me and like, you know, I trust that person that, hey, he can produce a very profitable lead generation source. I want to know more. So yours was really straightforward. I hear a lot of people come in. It's like, well, because it's said it and forget it, right? Um, because it's a high quality lead. You're like, 
because it, if it makes money, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, so, dude. Like, I don't care if I'm selling toilet paper, underwear. Like, gross. dude, make me some money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, my my brain's way too uh, way too simple for for you know thinking strategically about these things. Yeah. So so here's the story. So uh, I'm talking with Tom Quill, and Tom's like, "Hey, man." Uh, I need you in like 48 hours to book a ticket and fly down to Florida to meet me and some other people. This, again, this is typical Tom Crow, which I love, right? Yep. And so again, I know Bryn Daniels is going down there. Again, I, I love, I have a great relationship with, he's a good buddy of mine. And I don't really know who else is going to be there. And so we get down there and I get to meet uh, you and I meet Derek and some other people. And then we kind of have this concept of exchanging ideas, like this little bit of a mastermind, but here's where it gets funny. So at the end of it, Tom's like, we're going to take you guys pheasant hunting. And uh, man, I'm <laughs> not a hunter at all, but I love adventure. So I'm yeah. like, dude, pheasant hunting, I'm in. Like, uh, this will be something I can just kind of check off my bucket list of that was a cool experience. So we literally go out to this place and it, it's the full thing. I'm talking, we got the whole garb. We got the hats, the camouflage, we got the guns. We have, what were the things that we rode in, those big things? What are they called? They had like these big like buggies. I don't even know. They're like they, these, they, you can go it's through the you Florida going to marshes. Like in right. Tanzania or Kenya. Like it's well, well, you, missed the, you missed the point. Tom, Tom rode us there in a limousine, yeah, right? So we, no, <laughs> no sense at all, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you think we were going to Vegas or something like that, but no, we're going hunting and yeah. When we showed up in that limousine out in the middle of nowhere, I think those people are like, all these rednecks are like, oh no, someone's going to get shot. (laughs) You ever seen that movie, Typical City? Right. So by this time, I know that like Zach is like an avid hunter. And so they're like, hey, you need to get in your buggies. And there's like three of them. And we kind of like, everyone's just talking, hanging out. And I see Zach get in the front one. And I'm like, I need to go with that guy. Because I'm like, am I going to want to be besides Brent Daniels or Tom when they hunt? You know, maybe talking about business, but again, I always want to be around the best. And I know Zach, like, dude, you go out and like get lost (laughs) in the woods for like a month. And like, you're the guy that like kills a buck and like hauls it over your shoulder, like Rambo, like, like this is Zach. So I'm like, I'm going with Zach. So on this trip of hunting, we start talking about radio and you know that I'm about to launch REI radio. And the thing I learned about Zach real quick is when he sets his mind on something, he wants to do it. And so Zach, you're like, what I got to do, Chris, for me to be the very first person, even before you launch REI radio to help me set up radio in your market. You remember this? Oh, I'd remember a hundred percent, man. You, I know relentless. that I was, I know that I annoyed the hell out of you. I know it. <laughs> I'm like, I got all this going on and I'm about to launch this program and Zach, like, I think it's awesome. And again, by the time we finished fun, uh, hunting though, like I really got to like you cause I got to know you a lot more hunting and dude, you helped me like kill pheasants. Like we had such a good time. Of course, like you hit your maximum, of course, uh, just because like with a gun, you're like, you're the guy like throws it behind his back and like <laughs> shoots it there, like, that guy. So when I get back after this whole trip, you like hit me up immediately, like two or three times. What I got to do, what I do. I'm like, all right, this guy is not going to give up. I'm going to help him set up radio. So Zach, was there any modules for you to watch at this point? No, I, I no. got one-on-one with Chris Arnold. It was great. Is there any other students to hear about their testimonials of how it was working? Nope. Just, just uh, your word and Tom's word that you knew what you were doing. That's that was it. it. So you're like this anomaly. And so you and I get on the phone and I literally just kind of verbally explain how to do radio. There's no written out format at this point. We haven't methodically built this thing out. And so you head off on radio, right? Now, what's interesting is we've talked about the negotiating part being the most challenging part. And so when you got up, talk a little bit about your initial experience with negotiating. You didn't just get in and make it happen. It was like a mental challenge for you. Oh, it's huge mental challenge. It took me over six months to get my first radio station. Yeah. And that was not because I was trying really hard. That was because I'd given up. You gave up. So I got discouraged, right? Because Chris is like, okay, 
So when you have this many listeners, this is your price. And so I went through and did everything he told me to, to evaluate what I should be paying for these ads. And I'm like, I want to pay 14 cents an ad. And they're like, uh, that adds 65 cents an ad. I'm like, well, you that's what I mean like dollars or, no, sorry. $65 an ad, yeah, $14 versus like, 40, 65 cents for an ad. I'm in. <laughs> no, I'm in. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean like literally a quarter, sometimes one fifth of what they're, what they're asking for. I'm, a, I'm offering a quarter to one fifth and I'm like, yeah. no, Chris said that's the price I should get. I'm not, I'm not going any higher. Call me when you're ready, you know? And like, I remember like kind of sweating bullets, like, man, like this is, this is aggressive. Like, I don't think that I'll ever get this. And, and so you didn't have any other students to hear their success stories. You didn't, no. I didn't have, you know, X amount of people I could line up, but yeah. here's what happened. So we launched IR radio and time goes by. And again, honestly, Zach, you kind of like set it down and go work on other things. Well, again, which is normal, right? If you kind of yep. get discouraged, you're like, I'm going to go do something else. But it kept bothering me. Cause I'm seeing all these students get set up and there's like that competitiveness in me going, I want the first guy that I ever talked about radio before we launched to get up. And so all of a sudden I like start kind of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I kind of start nudging and poking you like, Hey man, um, I really think you should call those radio stations back. Right. Yep. And you're like, Oh, and I'm like, Hey man, I've got all of these like students that are up on radio and you're not. So I'm like trying to like, like, ed like edge you on a little bit, right. Kind of poke you. And then I don't know what happened, but you respond, you pick up the phone, you get back at it. And then boom, what happens? I, I, I landed three contracts, like in the first couple of weeks, three, so, so so the, three the, radio stations. Yeah. So I'm signing my fourth contract actually today with a, the fourth radio station. Yeah. So the, the crazy thing, Chris, about all this is you have some of the same students that I have. So I'm on these support calls with my students and I'm like, okay, how are things going? How are things going? They're like, well, I'm negotiating a deal right now. Can you help me? I'm like, yeah, let's talk about it. Okay. Where'd this deal come from? They're like radio. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm like, man, I'm like, man, what am I doing? I just paid so much money to Chris he gave me the whole system. Why have I not set this up? So like, this has actually happened. So, um, so I, I think Jay just did like a testimonial. I saw that come in. So yeah. Jay's talking about it. He's in Phoenix. Right. And then, um, Marine from, uh, from the Midwest Marine yes, and uh, Roy. Marine. Yeah. Yeah. So the, those are two of the students and you know, we're, we're working through their deals and I'm talking to them and I, you know, I love my students. I'm all, I'm involved with what they're doing. And I'm like, man, this, this is working for them come on, Zach, quit slacking. Right. Like, and then you like text me and I was like, Oh, okay. got shut down at that point. Like you had no more because again, by yourself being on your own, but here, it's hard to do, but here's the value. I think in my takeaway from it, Zach, you're highly intelligent. There's no question that you're a go getter. The one thing you just didn't have was the community and the support and those around you to kind of hold you accountable. You were kind of an island under yourself because technically you weren't in the REI radio community. You yeah. were a kind of this anomaly that convinced me to help you set it up before we ever got started. And then I believe, you know, through that process of community, my community, right? REI radio community is now overlapping into your community. And all of a sudden there comes the accountability. Now you get radio set up. What type of success have you seen so far since you launched and how, how long have you been live? Yeah. So I can give you some exact numbers. Um, my, so I had my, my KPIs pulled up, uh, for you guys to be able to hear this. So I'm just going to kind of like read them off to you. So I got my first contracts, um, and getting some things up and going. The first two went live the next month. Um, so the first one went live and then like a couple weeks later, I got the second, like a week later, I got the third. And like I said, I'm just getting my fourth. So I only have a couple months of data, which is kind of fun to see because we're already getting awesome results. So if I go to it is August, August 17th right now, but I can show you my June and my July expenses. And uh, we kind of figured um, those together. We figured that between yeah. June and July, you spent a total of $12,000. Yeah, give, give or take a few hundred bucks. Okay. So again, if you're listening, you don't have to spend that much. But again, Zach has the budget. He's more seasoned to do that. We always tell people that you can start around a thousand to maybe $2,000, but Zach comes out swinging. So you spend about $12,000 in two months and then you close a deal for 
38,000. 30, 30, 38, yep. And then you have another deal now that's got multiple offers on. And then we figure that that conservatively is going to sell for what? Based on your offers. Around 20. So I've got offers at 16, but I have a bunch of offers coming in. My acquisition manager literally texted me a couple week or a couple minutes ago that we should make as close, as pretty close to 25. So conservatively, we should make about 20. Okay. Yeah. So if we take the 38 that's closed plus the 20 conservative, that puts you at 58. You've spent 12,000. From a dollar per dollar return right off the bat, you're at $4.80 for the dollar that you spent. That's amazing. Again, yep. I tell you three to four is what I set as an expectation. You're actually 80 cents above what I consider to be a really good return. You're at $4.80. How does that yep. feel? Dude, it feels awesome. It feels so awesome because, you know, I have an awesome, gener you know, lead generation system, but now I have another one. Right. And I have another tool in my, in my belt to, to generate deals. Um, and, you know, I, I always look at it this way and I tell people, if you can spend less than 25% of your gross income on marketing, you can have a 50% profit margin wholesaling business. Okay. And that's, that's paying an acquisition manager and everything else. So I calculated Let me break it. that down. You spend 25% of what comes in on marketing. Yep. The other 25% goes to operations and acquisitions like commissions. Yep. And your goal then is to have a business that has a 50% profit margin. Again, if you're newer to business, 50% is it's bonkers. really high. It's it has, so it's high. Bonkers when high I washed thing. windows, 10%, I was like, hell yeah, baby. Most companies 10%. are running 10 to 15% profit yep. margins. 25% profit margin in the world of business is like bragging rights. 50, yep. I agree, is pretty uh, bonkers on what you're doing. So Radio fits this model and is allowing you to put 50% of the money that comes in off of radio right in your pocket. Exactly. Exactly. And That's so, awesome. you know, for me, it's, it's a no brainer. It's like a money machine. I always tell, tell my students, you know, if you have a good lead generation system, you know, and I, I feel this way about radio now, but I, but I feel this way about driving for dollars as well. If you go to Vegas and you sit down in a lottery machine, all right, or one of those machines, I've never even gone to Vegas. I've been, but I've never, you know, gambled. But you, 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 throw, you throw a dollar in, right? And you hit the money machine and a hundred bucks comes out. And you throw in another dollar and another hundred bucks comes out. And you throw in a dollar and a thousand bucks comes out. And if you do that over and over, are you ever going to get up from that table and go to another machine? No. You're going you're gonna to keep pumping that machine, right? And taking that money home. And, and I, I tell my students, I tell, you know, I tell everyone on this, like find a marketing channel like REI radio that can just continue to pump money into your business because that, that is essentially what's serving you. That's going to allow you to have the financial freedom, to have the time freedom, to be able to afford to pay people to service these leads for you and to be able to serve other people in whatever way you want to and actually have a fulfilling life, not just chasing the dollar every day. Right. Yeah. I think that's really well said because again, you have the mindset of not running this thing like you own a job, but you truly own a business and to be able to run it yep. like a business, you've got to be able to have things that generate enough profit for you to be able to spend things like money on salaries, to spend yep. things like uh, money on tech, those type of things, because it costs money to not be the one that's the solopreneur, but to actually have your team do it for you, which I, yep. which I love. Um, again, if you're like listening in uh, on iTunes, I highly recommend uh, go to Chris Arnold Real Estate, subscribe and actually see this video so you can see myself and Zach. So pop on over there to do that. So Zach, now that um, radio's up and I'm laughing because again, you're so simplistic, which I love and like your response of like, I like radio because it makes me money. But outside of the fact that it's being profitable for you, what are a couple of things now that you're liking about radio? in the sense of kind of the qualities it has versus other traditional stuff? Um, my big thing, like you said, I'm simple, right? Like, yeah, I, I was, like owned I, I'm like, I'm a very simple dude. If, if, if I don't understand it, I don't like it. Right. Um, if it's, if someone tries to teach me something and they, they struggle to explain it to me, I run for the hills. Right. Um, and so are you saying you they, like radio because it's not overly complicated? Yeah, it's simple. Like you, you gave me exactly, 
you, you gave me the step-by-step -step of exactly what to look for, right? How to narrow down. So you have all these radio stations. You narrowed it down. These are the radio stations. You said, these are the criteria that you look for, right? Then you, then you had me figure out exactly what I should offer. You, you explained exactly how to negotiate that. And then once it, that was all done, it's running. It's running. It's done, right? Any good uh, uh, marketing guy, any good sales guy, they have their scripts, they have their systems down exactly what to do and what to expect, right? Yeah. And so, so for me, that's what I loved about your radio system because there's probably other guys that could teach radio or talk about radio, but they probably don't have it as simple as you do, right? So, um, you know, that, that's probably what I liked most about the radio that, that you shared with me, right? The radio marketing system. And that's a big um, but, deal because if you're listening and you're newer, you know, you're, you're overwhelmed with like information overload, right? Yeah. Exactly. You know what it felt like to be in the beginning stages yep. of like, oh my gosh, where do I start? So the idea that you can launch a marketing channel that isn't like overly complicated to understand. And more importantly, it's not overly complicated to run. I like what one student told me like, Chris, when I launch a marketing channel in my business, I don't want to feel like I just launched an entirely new full-time job for myself. I want to be able to launch something that has simplicity that gives me the freedom to be able to, you know, balance all the things in my life that I need to balance. And so I think the point that you're hitting on is a really important point is the fact that radio has a lot of simplicity to it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah any good marketing system like radio is a plug and play, right? It's truly a money machine. You put the people or you put the system in place and then it generates leads and generates money. And then if you go, Hey, I want to build my net worth. I'm going to keep one as a rental. You can do that. Or you can just wholesale everything and travel the world. Like your, your, your lead generation system should serve you. And I feel like REI radio does a fantastic job of, of adding to my marketing channels. Yeah. So. And that's exactly what we want to accomplish. And I love man that you convinced me when we were hunting to kind of go on this journey. And I think you're looking now going, man, I'm really glad I was like, persistent with this and made it happen. Yeah. So let's talk about one of the key things and that's buying radio at a discount price. Because if you're listening, and again, this just recently <laughs> happened. Um, I had someone that actually that came to me that launched radio outside of REI radio. Um, and funny enough, they ended up joining because it just wasn't launched properly. So I know some people are like, and I get it if I can go do it without paying somebody to do it, I'm going to go do it. I'm not blaming anyone for that uh, concept. I just don't think that you can really do that with radio because even though it's simple, there's a very specific way that you have to line up all of the variables, how long your ad is, what you say in your ad, when your ad should play, what station you should negotiate on uh, or be on, what price, all of those type of things just add up and you have a lot of decisions to make. So to give the audience an idea, um, how much are you paying for a 60 second spot on some of the stations you're on right now? Like just rattle off. It depends off. on the, the cumulative. So yeah, I'm anywhere between, uh, between $14 an ad to $30 an ad for a okay, one so minute spot. Let me put this into perspective. Time. For a 60 second spot on the radio, Zach is paying between 14 to $30. I hope that you understand how inexpensive that is to know that you can get 60 seconds of radio airtime in which millions of people or hundreds of thousands, if you're in a smaller market, are hearing this advertisement. It's crazy that you can negotiate that price. But Zach, what you figured that is if you had not hired myself and, and you know the community to help you build this, how much more, like times more, would you have been paying? So if I had gone on with the marketed price. So the one of the $14 ads, they were saying lowest it goes $45 an ad. They started it at $55 an ad, right? Yeah. I had other ads that were like 120 bucks an ad. I got them down to 30 bucks an ad. Yeah. Seriously, like a quarter of the price. So remember what I said that like I'm 20% of whatever I'm making is going towards marketing. Marketing. If I would have paid four times that, that means I would have been paying 80% or more of whatever I was making on marketing, I would have had to go get a second job just to pay my team to go service those leads. 
Yeah. So no different than real estate, all the profit is made on the purchase. The same is true with radio. And here's why I tell people that are trying to set up radio. And again, if you want to go try it outside of our radio, be my guest, but I'm just giving you the feedback I've gotten. We are teaching fundamentally in the secret is how to buy radio at fundamentally 25 cents on the dollar, 50 cents on the dollar. Again, if you were getting into real estate and you were an investor and you didn't know better but to pay retail, and then all of a sudden someone comes along and says, I'm going to show you how to buy a house at 60, 70 cents on the dollar. That would probably catch your attention if you'd been paying retail. You agree with that analogy, Zach? Oh, 100%. I did that though. I actually got my first flip off of the MLS and lost money. And I was like, shoot, this doesn't work. I need that to find a way work. to. <laughs> and that's I, what I need wholesaling. Saying. Zach, they're yeah. paying retail for radio. If you call the radio station, if you hire a media company, I just got to be honest with you, they don't have the mindset of buying what we're buying at at 25, 50 cents. So that's what Zach, I think, really hit home with me. He's like, Chris, the best value you added to me is number one, showed me what to buy it at. And number two, proved to me over time that it was possible. Because yep. that was your hurdle, Zach, is that you were like, they're really going to come down like 75% from where they are. And did they? Yeah, they did. The, the frustrating thing is I had followed up for like, like seriously, probably once a week for like a month and a half, two months. And I was like, man, maybe this Chris Arnold guy's not all he's cracked up to be, you know? <laughs> I know. And I, like, I love you now, Chris, but like, there was a moment that I doubted you, but that you stayed, you stayed with me, right? You stayed with me and encouraged me. And then I started seeing some of these other people around me finding success. I was like, Hey, wait a minute. You're slacking Zach, get back at it. And, yeah. and I'm grateful for that, you know, because now I, now I have this other marketing channel. Um, you know, my hope, my expectation, I feel like this fourth radio station is about all I'm going to want to do in my market. And, if, if, if the numbers hold true, this is going to add another half a million dollars a year to my business, another quarter million dollars to my own pocket a year. Yeah. That's crazy. That it's quarter crazy. million. That's oh. why I tell people, I think I know experientially being in the game 15 years that radio without question is the best marketing channel that I've ever put in place for my business. That's the only thing I've kept around for 10 years, as long as I've been doing it. Um, because again, it's just been consistently profitable year in and year out. And so but I just want to tell you, man, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud that when I got in uh, and kind of edged you on a little bit, and more importantly, that you were teachable. It sounds like you kind of had a moment in which the students kind of turn around your students and kind of taught you, right? Challenge you. Oh, dude. Which I think is have, have you found that though, being a coach? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Isn't that the beautiful thing about coaching? Yeah. That we go in to coach and then all of a sudden our students teach us so much about ourselves. Yeah. If I, I want to say this to, our, to your listeners, dude. If any of you are struggling to have anything in your life, like if you want more money, if you want uh, more love in your life, I want you to focus on giving away whatever you're trying to receive. Seriously, if you're trying to make more money in your business, I want you to think how can you put more money in someone else's business? Because if you start to fo focus on giving for some reason – everything will come back. When I started teaching my students about how to make money and talking about driving for dollars and that kind of stuff, dude, I learned so much more than from my students than I ever could have imagined. Right. And, and I feel like I, I feel so grateful that I found that when I did and how I did. Right. And so it's just, it's being a coach, being a mentor, as you know, Chris, it's the most fulfilling thing in the world. And for some reason it just keeps coming back. Yep. And it's the same with my students. Our students are so creative around radio that sometimes I talk with my team. I'm like, how did that student come up with that? We never thought about that. And that's the value yeah. of being in community. It's that force multiplier of creativity and idea. So again, if you're tuning in, you're listening, I'm sure at this point you've heard us talk about radio again. I, again, we just have one student after another coming on and just talking about the value of this in their business. So again, what I recommend you do is book a call. See if your market is open. We have markets at this point that have been sold out. So you could potentially lose the opportunity because we want to preserve it. We don't want to oversaturate the country with it. So go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash REI radio. Again, that's wholesalinginc.com 
facebook.com forward slash REI radio and book a call. And Zach, if somebody's on the fence, kind of listening in, what's the last thing that you would tell that person that's going, man, should I make this decision on radio? You know, and again, I've been there. It's like, uh, like, should I cross this line? Should I pull the trigger? What would you tell that person that's listening right now? I'd say real estate investing is marketing. If you don't have a marketing channel, you need to start. You need to find a way to make it happen and, and come up with the money, whatever it takes and start your marketing. Absolutely. 100%. <clears throat> well, Zach, I'm proud of you, buddy. This, I was so excited about doing this podcast because it like closed this whole thing for full circle <laughs> for right. you and this crazy story that started with you and me on a big, whatever you want to call it, safari looking thing, shooting <laughs> pheasants with a couple of dogs and like a hunting guide. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. And now we're here. So like in those moments, like you just never know where the relationship's going to end up. And I think For it's sure. just such a comical story in my mind of how this whole thing played out. So right. anyway, to the rest of you, thank you so much for tuning in until next time we will catch you soon and we will add more value. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much.